Welcome back to Blue Line Patriot, guys. Today's going to be an update uh, slash review, 500 round update slash review uh, for the Springfield Hellcat Pro. Um, I'm not going to waste much time getting into it, but I did buy this gun a couple of uh, weeks ago. I started a new job, needed a new gun. Um, I do conceal carry at this job, so you know I wanted something bigger than the Glock 43X, but I didn't want to be concealed carrying my M&P 2.0 that I carry on duty. Um, so I wanted something smaller than the M&P, bigger than the Glock uh, 43X, so I settled with a Springfield Hellcat Pro. Um, and I don't regret it. So let's talk about it a little bit. We're going to start from the outside, work our way in. Uh, so the holster itself, holster is a four bros holster. Um, had it for, well, I've had it since uh, just as long as I've had the gun. Um, so one thing I want to uh, kind of do some justice to is last time, last video I did uh, regarding this holster, I think it was the last time I talked about the Hellcat. Um, <clears throat> I pointed out this icon here, um, you know, saying it looked kind of like a you know, somebody bending over with their gaping butthole popped out. Um, looked like maybe a mama bird feeding two baby birds. Well, in my comment section, somebody um, brought to light that this is actually a man, right? With these lines that we're seeing are arteries, um, vitals and arteries and whatnot. So from here, we see the carotid arteries coming down into the heart. And then we have the... Uh, arteries in the shoulders coming out to the brachial arteries. We have the abdominal artery and the this little Y down here going to your uh, femoral arteries. So <clears throat> that is what that is. And, um, you know, looking at it closer and a little longer, I get it now. Uh, but originally, that was, uh, originally, that was not what I was seeing. It's kind of like a Rorschach test. Um, but anyway... As far as the holster, I do not mind the holster at all. <clears throat> at all, I think it's a, you know, great holster for the money. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, there's nothing super special about it, I will say, except for the one thing that I do um, value in this holster that I don't have in other holsters is these claws here. These claws are very aggressive. Um, they clip onto your belt very, very well, so you never have to worry about, um, you know, unholstering your your gun in your holster coming with you so um, that's one thing I definitely am going to give super credit to is the style not only <clears throat> does it function very well it looks really cool too so I like that logo um, I think it's pretty cool I like the way the overall holster looks so yeah <clears throat> I recommend it are there better holsters out there probably um, but this is the one that I use and that works perfectly for me so moving on to the pistol now uh this officially has just over 500 rounds. I don't know exactly how many, um, and I'll explain that. Uh, basically, what happened eh, before I get there? Let me let me stay on task. So while I'm talking about the holster and transitioning from the holster to the to the actual pistol, um, there's some things I just want to highlight. So when I first got the pistol, um, I you know I mentioned some holster wear happening basically along here and for whatever reason you can't see it very well it might just be the light um so a little bit of holster wear um happening up here a little bit of it happening here not really out i mean it's it's a little bit now hang on let me adjust the light a little bit just to see if we can see that any better hmm no okay guys um so i can't see it as as well as i um can in other light which um to be honest with you guys i do not care about holster wear at all i think the more wear you have on your pistol or your or your rifle or your shotgun or whatever the more wear you have on your weapon tells me that you use it you know what i'm saying so if it's a weapon that you never shoot never use never do anything with yeah cool it's gonna stay pretty but uh, me personally, I don't value that at all. A uh, little bit of holster wear up here too for going in and out of the holster. But uh, like I said, personally, if there's wear on a on a on a weapon, that tells me that you're using it. That tells me you're training with it. That tells me you have a certain level of comp competency with that weapon, um, and I respect that. 
Um, I really do. I have a lot of training background, so I've seen a lot of guns. I know what guns look like when people train with them. I know what guns look like when people, you know, get a very proficient level with them, and they do not look brand new. So that's why, like I said, I enjoy a uh, well-broken-in, weared-out gun. So um, some people might see the holster wear and complain or find a reason to complain. Me, personally, I don't mind that at all. So, um, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of wear it as a badge of honor. So, uh, moving forward, 500 rounds. Uh, the first 250, uh, maybe the two, yeah, first 250 rounds was basically a bullet soup. I had everything in there from 150 grain full metal jacket, steel, and brass case ammo. I had 124 gold dot, or 124 grain uh, spear gold dots, um, uh, jacket at hollow points. Um, I had Hornady critical defense jacket at hollow points. I forget what grain they were. I want to say 115, but I'm not sure. Um, and the uh, ammo that I have now, I found that it works pretty well, um, is a Hornady uh, XTP 115 grain. Um, I also had PMC uh, jacket at hollow points, 115 grain through it as well. So like I said, bullet soup, pretty much every... Um, round that I've been putting off to the side as old ammo or ammo I didn't know what to do with yet. I put it in a bag and uh, so I took that bag to the range with me. It's a lot of it's old duty ammo. Um, a lot of it's just ammo I dumped down and didn't want to put like 10 rounds back in the 50 round box so I put it in the, the bag itself. So that's kind of what I do with old ammo. I just throw it all together and then what I like to do when I get a new gun I take all that to the range, I put it through it, see if it has any hiccups, if it does have hiccups, what rounds is it having hiccups with. Uh, but this, I'm happy to say, ran everything through except for the Hornady Critical Defense. The Hornady Critical Defense, I'll put a picture of it here, I've had problems with that with literally every gun that I've ever had. I've had problems with it through my M&P, uh, my original M&P, um, basically double feeding. Uh, I had problems with my M&P 2.0 double feeding. I had problems with this gun, two rounds, uh, maybe two rounds out of maybe uh, 20 rounds. Um, I think I had 20 rounds total. Uh, all of them went through this, and I had two hiccups, basically double feeds. Um, either double feeds or failure to... Uh, to go into battery to chamber so basically it just you know whatever round was before it or maybe there was two in a row i can't really remember uh, but basically every time i had a problem it was with hornady critical defense so <clears throat> i'm not a fan of hornady critical defense at all i do not recommend buying that i've had like i said i've had problems with it in this gun i've had problems with it in my glock 43x I had problems with it in my Glock 43. I had problems with it in my M&P 2.0. I had problems with it in my regular M&P. Um, and I also had problems in it with, uh, or problems with it in my uh, Smith & Wesson Shield I had years and years and years ago. So I've never had luck with that ammo. So, you know, it doesn't really surprise me that I had an issue with this. So I do not chalk it up to a magazine issue. I do not chalk it up to an extractor issue. Um, that's common for me to have problems with that ammo. So I'm not a fan of it. I don't recommend it. I don't blame the gun for, for my two double feeds that I had out of 250 rounds. Like I said, they were both critical defense, you know, so whatever. Um, moving on. After about, I don't know, 100, 150 rounds, I noticed my optics started to come loose. Um, <clears throat> it's not because my screws were backing out. Basically what was happening is it, it's like a settling issue. Um, so that's something to be aware of if you're putting on a brand new optic. Um, so if you put on a brand new optic, if you've never run into this situation before, um, your plate, your optic and your surface area here might be a little tiny bit out of spec, not necessarily out of spec, but, um, it might need a little bit of a breaking in period. So basically what was happening is when I installed it, it was solid. But when I took it to the range and started firing it and exposing it to certain vibrations, it settled a little differently. All right. Um, so after a little bit, I started to notice that it was moving ever so slightly, maybe a millimeter, maybe a half a millimeter back and forth. Um, so what I did is I got my, um, my torque screwdriver and went ahead and tightened it up, 
to where it was supposed to be. I did get a little bit of a movement, but then I started clicking. So I think it was just a settling issue. So once it's settled, like I said, I torqued it back up to proper specs. And I guess uh, from the factory, uh, this hollow sun uh, site is supposed to be torqued at six, or I'm sorry, 15 uh, pounds, uh, 15 square pounds or whatever. Uh, but I put mine to 17 just to give it a little bit of extra. Um, I don't want to crank on these because I don't want them shearing off eventually because there's no give. Um, so I figure screw it. I'm just going to go one pound more than recommended just to make sure that they are on there good. And basically I just left them there. And ever since I torqued these down after the first time that I found this uh, a little bit wiggly, torqued it down again, it's set just fine. Zero issues moving forward. Um... So one thing I do want to talk about is these sights that uh, come stock on the gun. I very much enjoy these sights. My only regret with this pistol is that I put an optic on it too soon. I wish I could have had more time to enjoy my stock sights um, before I put the optic on. This is the first gun that I ever, first pistol that I ever put an optic on. And um, learning to find that optic, getting comfortable with it. Um, I'm fine now, but I still find myself sometimes looking for that front sight. <sighs> so it is definitely adjustment to make. Now, one thing I would do is I would definitely get these front sights, uh, stock, but if they were just raised a little bit, so basically the same exact stock sights raised just a touch, not suppressor height, but just raised just enough to give me maybe like a lower one third co-witness through here. I think that would be freaking awesome. Even if it was a low one, one quarter, um, co-witness through here, I think would be just great, but you just simply can't do that. Now you could lollipop it for sure. You could find your front sight, put it on your target. You know that you're going to hit just above your front sight. Um, so that's an option. If your sight, if your op, if your red, if your dot actually goes down, you could always lollipop <clears throat> and so long as you know your holds, you can make very decent shots with that. So if I were to lollipop, I might look for something like this. And you can see by that dot, I'm going to hit just above where that front sight is. So <clears throat> I'm okay with that. If my optic ever does go down, battery dies, I'm you know, whatever. I could still, with the stock sights, I could still uh, get a pretty decent, accurate shot with this. Now, one thing I want to show about the uh, stock sights here. And I just learned this the other night, but you can see how right now it's basically you got your tritium um, in the middle there. You can't see it now because I have light on it, but you do have your tritium insert there um, that will glow um, in the dark in low light conditions. Um, but it is surrounded by like a glowy, I don't know, a glowy material where if you go from, you know, uh, low light, or I'm sorry, if you go from a, a light situation to a low light situation, you know, it's going to glow. I'm going to turn these uh, side lights I have down just a bit to try and drive home this point that I'm going to make in a second. But like I said, you go into a low light situation, that's going to glow pretty good. Now, a cool trick is if you want to get the most bang for your buck, so to speak, is look at the front sight the way it is now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, I'm going to take my tack light here. I'm going to give that a little dose of i don't know 1000 lumens and watch how bright this is now it's reflecting off of the pistol <laughs> it's reflecting off of here it's so bright it's literally so bright it's casting light so um and that'll die down it'll take a little bit to calm down a little bit but um yeah the front sight on this is is really cool too because you can get that thing you can charge it up you know, get it to glow um, pretty decently. So I'm going to turn my lights back up here. Give me a second. So cool little trick. I know there's other, obviously other optics or other sites out there that do that, but that's one thing I just wanted to uh, show you guys with that. So moving on. Uh, barrel. Barrel is a uh, I'm pretty sure it's a 3.7, I believe. Um, it's accurate. I mean, what can I say? This gun probably fires more accurate, more accurately 
than I do. But one thing that I want to show you uh, with the barrel, well, not necessarily the barrel, but more, more of the chamber. So <clears throat> if you look down in there, you can see the, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a good amount of light in here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Hmm. So I'm not sure of the angle. I'm working on a weird angle here. Basically, guys, the point I'm trying to make here is you can see the barrel, you can see the chamber in there, and the ramp going into the chamber is actually pretty damn nice. It's uh, it's, it's polished. It's very well polished. Um, yeah, I'm really trying to get a good angle to show you guys, but it's, uh, it's being tough. Eh, I guess that kind of works. So it's a nice polished um, ramp, which is very, very nice. Um, and another thing is that there's a ramp below that that you can see, below the actual barrel that you can see, and that ramp is part of the frame itself. So you have a very um, robust ramp in there helping to feed certain rounds. And the reason I'm working this back and forth is so you can see that 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 ramp that's a part of the frame is not actually part of the barrel in the chamber. And in real life, maybe I'll get a picture of this and post it in there so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but it is very well polished in there. So as far as feeding, it's, it's, uh, that's very nice. That's a very dependable ramp right there. <clears throat> um, let's see what else. The ramp barrel, uh, magazines, the magazines run great. One thing I'll say about these magazines though, is that, uh, these mags are the hardest magazines that I've ever had to load in my life. Um, when I'm by myself and I'm behind closed doors, I will admit that for the first time in my life, I use a sessi loader, <laughs> if you'll call it that. Um, some people call them speed loaders, some people call them something else, whatever. But there's a, there's a sissy loader <clears throat> that comes with this gun. And for the first time in my life, I do use it. Now, if I'm on the range, I do not use it. But I'll also admit, I don't load 15 rounds into the magazine on the range. I'll load 10. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, when I'm behind closed doors and I want to get that 11, 12, 13, 14, 15th round in this magazine, yes, I do use that fucking bitch loader. <sighs> so... That's my confession. I've never used one in my life, but that is to, that's basically my way of saying that loading these magazines up to 15 rounds, guys, is a pain in the ass. So um, definitely the most, most stubborn magazine that I've ever loaded in my life, but I have had it loaded up to 15 rounds multiple times at the range. And I know I just said that I typically put 10 rounds in there, but um, I do want to make sure that 15 rounds are going to, are going to run. So I did test that out a couple of times, not a lot, but a couple of times and never had an issue with it at all. So magazines, they run just fine. Uh, the magazine button here, that works just fine. Zero issues there. Um, give me a sec. So zero issues with the magazine button the magazine release works just fine there's zero issue getting it in getting it out um, i've heard one person say that the magazine release is a little stiff i disagree i think it works just as fine as any other magazine release um it's very flush right here maybe it sticks out a half a millimeter and then down here if you want to get the mag mag out you're going to be able to get the mag out and also this you could flip it over to the other side there's um you know some videos about how to do that it's not very difficult there's just a little bar in here you need to finagle and twist it around just like you do on a glock or an m p um so we got mags we got uh let's talk about uh the trigger now one thing i'll say about this trigger guys is there's people out there that want to piss and moan about the trigger um the trigger's just fine. I fired Glocks, I fired M&Ps. I don't think this pulls any heavier than a Glock or ever, any heavier than an M&P. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think it resets any differently. Um, I think it's pretty much your standard stock trigger that you'll find on most pistols out there. Um, does it pull a little bit heavy? I don't know. I've heard people say 
um, that it's a heavy trigger, but I would not describe it as a heavy trigger. I would describe it as a deliberate trigger, meaning that it still pulls at maybe like five and a half, six pounds, somewhere, somewhere around there. But it's not a hard trigger to squeeze. If you want to squeeze off a round and you want to squeeze a round off fast, you're going to be able to do that. Um, the practical application with this firearm, I with the trigger, I trust my life with it. I see no issue with it protecting my life. Um, if you're like um, like a sport speed type shooter and you're going for milliseconds and all that sort of crap, you know you want a really short reset and a really light trigger break fast so you can get that time in. I get that. This is not your trigger. But for practical application out there in a self-defense role, I think it works perfectly fine. I think it's an excellent trigger for uh, defense. Because like I said, you're not going to accidentally cook off a round. If you do quick cook off a round, you're definitely going to mean it because, you know, it's like I said, it's just not a trigger that's going to go off accidentally. You're going to, it's a very deliberate pull. Okay. The reset, I've heard somebody complain about the reset. The reset is just no different than a, than a, than a standard Glock, no different than a standard M and P, um, feels literally the same to me. The only thing that I would say is that the trigger is very flat. Um, and this sh trigger shoot does not stick out like a Glock will stick out a little bit and screw your finger up. But the, uh, trigger on this, the shoe horn or the trigger horn, Trigger shoe, I, I do this every time, trigger shoe um, sits, flush, sits flush with the actual trigger itself. So it's a very comfortable trigger. Uh, let's see, moving down. The grip and the stippling, um, just like I said in my first video, the grip and the stippling is great. Um, the back strap and the front strap are very flat. Um, it's not really something you're more than, it's not really something you're going to see. It's not going to be very pronounced in the video, um, but if you ever get your hands on one of these, you're going to feel that it feels different than it, than anything else I've ever felt before. It has a very flat um, back strap, very flat uh, sides to it. It's almost like holding a Snickers bar <laughs> or her, you know, um, it's very similar to that. Like if you got a very big Snickers bar, that's how it would feel. Um, <clears throat> so that's good by me because personally I enjoy doing a C clamp when I grip it. I want to put 99% of my, um, tension is going to be on the front strap and the back strap. Okay. So it's going to be basically be a C clamp when I hold it. I'm, I'm basically squeezing, um, you know, from the back strap and the front strap to make my, to make my grip. I'm putting very minimum, very minimum uh, pressure on the sides here. Like I said, maybe 1% of my pressure is on the sides there, but I'd say a good 98, 99% of my pressure is on the front strap and the, and the back strap. Uh, let's see here. The TLR. Uh, the TLR-8 here, this is the second one that I've had for this gun. Um, the first one that I had, bought it from Amazon, um, and I was having problems with the elevation adjustment. Uh, I was able to get my laser to go up, but I was not able to get my laser to go down. Um, so eventually after messing with it, I, I ended up unscrewing the screw in here. Um, I tried screwing it back in, trying to reset it, all that sort of crap <clears throat> and nothing worked. So I was able to trade this, uh, free of charge for a new one. And this is the second one that came in. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, so that's a nice little, I guess, a uh, nice little treat from Amazon. They'll exchange it for free, uh, which is nice. So I went ahead and did that. And it is kind of cool because this is a light laser combo. So you can have your light only. Um, well, right now I have my laser. You can't see it. It's too bright. But I have my laser and my light. But if you wanted to, what you do is you click this button and hold it and then there's a button on the other side that you just tap that one so click and hold this button tap the other one and now the laser went away but you cannot see that so now it's only a light so i'm going to click this and hold it and i'm going to tap the other light and now i just have a laser and now i hold this and i tap the other one and now i have my laser and my light so i have a light laser combo um or just laser or just light um just 
by the way you manipulate these uh buttons back here again it's it's the same on this side same kind of button here same kind of button here now um what i would do is if i ever found a um light similar to this a light laser combination that's thinner and like maybe higher up um i may consider that because this to me it's functional it works but i do consider a little bulky um and not so much that it's bulky um you know the width of it's bulky but um i just think it comes down further than it needs to i think this is bigger than it needs to be um i think this comes down further than it needs to um i i think that they can make this more compact is what i think at least 300 lumens maybe 500 lumens would be great um but i feel like there's definitely something else out there tack light wise that um, i might come across in the future i might trade that out um now one of the last things i'll talk about guys i know you've been noticing it the entire video is my green uh highlighting of all the uh, writing on the gun so um i know it's not for everybody <clears throat> but me personally i i do like it it kind of reminds me of the matrix and well my color the colors my entire life that have been my favorite were neon green especially when i was on black so black and neon green plus my green dot it's uh it's definitely it goes with the theme so basically all i did to do this guys was i got a um paint pen and i just basically just dabbed it along all the lettering let it dry for five ten minutes and then took a uh, q-tip with some hops number nine solvent and just went across it real lightly until the top layer was all off and you could see all the letters and i just wiped it off and uh went from there so that's how I did that. <clears throat> it's nice and easy to do. It takes maybe 30 minutes if you're doing it right. Um, and then, of course, I marked my uh, screws in the back here so I can tell if they um, walk out on me or not at all. Uh, moving on. So potential upgrades. Uh, potential upgrades with this gun. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to mess with the trigger. I think the trigger is perfectly fine. So I'm not going to upgrade. I'm not going to upgrade the trigger. I think the trigger is already perfect my opinion um there is a suppressor that i'm looking at it's a jk armament uh nine millimeter i think it's a the 105 the jk 105 um basically it's a um modular suppressor so you could either shrink it down uh to like two point because it has baffles that you can unscrew and screw in so the smallest you can get it is uh 1.9 inches it's basically two inches long um and it is threaded for one half by 28 threads so if i do get that suppressor obviously i'll have to get a new barrel and i'm proud of the wear that i have on my barrel and it sucks getting a new barrel um basically just because it feels kind of like when you prestige in call of duty um, i haven't played it for years but i remember you used to be able to do that and maybe you still can i don't know but um it's like all the all the wear that you've earned is now gone and you have to start over with a new barrel um like i said i don't like brand new looking guns i like worn looking guns because it means you've trained with it so anyway when i get a new barrel all that wear up here is going to be gone and um i'm going to feel like a punk again but whatever uh, but anyway definitely get a new barrel which is nice because you get a little bit longer which means a little bit more muzzle velocity which means a little bit more lethality of your um round so that's all good <clears throat> and who knows i might get a new barrel uh sometime here soon anyway just um just to get ahead of that curb so i can make sure that the ammo that i'm using groups nice feeds well you know all that sort of shit so i might do that relatively soon plus if i do it sooner i can get the wear back on there and i'll feel better about it <laughs> but um anyway that suppressor uh the barrel i'm gonna have to replace the barrel if i'm gonna get a suppressor um, so that's kind of down the line a little bit. Uh, these sites, these stock sites, if I can find these stock sites just a little bit higher to be able to, like I said, co-witness through the lower one third or the lower quarter. If you guys know of them, if they're out there and you've seen them, uh, just plug a link in the comment section. I'll buy them up very quickly because I know people piss and moan about these sites, but I love these sites. They're very intuitive 
as far as I'm concerned. Um, I love, I really like these sites and you could still be accurate because a lot of people, I don't know what it is. Um, just go back to the basics, equal height, equal light, equal height, equal light. So if I'm marrying the top of the rear sight with the top of the front sight, uh, I'm going to be accurate. <laughs> you know what I mean? The top of the sight and equal light on either side of the front sight when it's in the middle there, equal height, equal, equal light gives you a good sight. Okay. Um, it's not that difficult. It's a, it's a, it's a concept that goes way back to day one of shooting. Yet people will still piss and moan about how like, Oh, I can't figure out the, the iron sights. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You're, you're, you need to go back to your basics. Like it's not difficult to line up sights. <laughs> not difficult at all. Anyway, <clears throat> um, let's see here. I may or may not get a back plate, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything that I like. I'm not sure if I'll do that. I might, but we'll see if I do, you know, if I do it before I get to 1000 rounds, which I probably won't, but, um, I mean, I probably won't get a new back, uh, back plate before I get to a thousand rounds, but I guess, you know, at a certain point when I do get some upgrades, maybe I'll talk about them, but I don't really consider them upgrades. I consider them more of like, uh, cosmetic changes really. Um, magazine release. I might get a new one. If I do, I don't know what color I'm going to get. Maybe, maybe, maybe gray. Um, I might get a gray, maybe I'll get a gray back plate in a gray muzzle or a magazine release. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I might not. I might just leave it all stock. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the, uh, for the changes. I should say, I don't want to call them upgrades because unless it's going to upgrade your gun, it's not an upgrade. So, and everything that I want to get is not really going to upgrade it. Um, maybe the barrel might upgrade the muzzle velocity um, and the lethality of my rounds. Um, but everything else is really just cosmetic. Um, the suppressor, I'm not really sure if you can call that an upgrade or not. Um, uh, my personal uh, position with suppressors is I like to suppress signature, which is why they call them suppressors and not silencers. Silencers are devices that are going to focus primarily on decibel level, you know, make your gun super quiet. Okay, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but if you're looking into a quote unquote suppressor, what I look for is suppression of signature. So less blast, less flash, less noise, all that sort of shit. Um, so in my eyes, a suppressor, I don't hold to a higher, high, I don't hold to the highest standard when it comes to, uh, decibel level. I don't care if it's a little bit noisy, but it's still going to take off a bunch of noise from this, but it's going to be still noisy, whatever, as long as it's going to hide a bunch of flash, as long as it's not going to kick up dust around me, uh, you know, if I'm shooting somewhere super dusty. Now with a pistol, that's not so much of a worry, but for a rifle, it definitely is, especially if you're working in a team environment. You don't want your blast to go out to the sides and fuck with your teammates. Um, you don't want to be giving off, uh, flash either because you don't want to give away your position um, and you don't want again that concussion going off to the sides um, up and down because again you don't want that kicking up dust and debris and whatnot um, so what it's doing what a suppressor is going to do is suppress your signature all right so you're less detectable you're a little bit quieter you know you're not giving your position away and you're not fucking with your teammates um, <clears throat> so that's uh that that's how i view suppressors so as long as it throws my um my and i know that there's blast cones and flash cones out there and all that sort of thing those are nice too but you know to me to me using that philosophy those are suppressors as well you know what i mean i know it's different legally and all that sort of crap i don't want to get into that we're already over 30 minutes um, so anyway, guys, my overall, after 500 rounds, um, I love this gun still. Um, I highly recommend it to people who are considering it. But just know, if you do get one, you're going to have, you're not going to have a heavy trigger. You're going to have a deliberate trigger. All right, so if you want to squeeze off a round and you want to fire a round, you're going to have zero issue doing so. It's just not going to be a race gun. It's going to be 
a deliberate gun. Okay, you're not going to cook off rounds accidentally. You're only squeezing that trigger if you absolutely mean to squeeze that trigger. Um, your reset is just fine. The speed on it is just fine for a practical application. Uh, but again, if you're if you're you know going to be racing it and you're all about milliseconds, then it's probably not the trigger for you. You might want to change that trigger out to something more lighter and more speedy. But like I said, for practical application, it works just fine. Love it. Anyway, guys, that is it for my 500 round uh, Hellcat Pro. I, I always forget it's a Springfield. <laughs> That's it for my 500 round Springfield Hellcat Pro uh, review. So when I hit a thousand rounds, I'll come back. I'll talk to you guys about it. And um, that'll be that. Until next time, Blue Line Patriot signing out. Thanks for watching guys. Before you go, I want to let you know about my two stores. The links are in the description below. If you like tactical, survival, anti-woke stuff, this is the place for you. I have lots of t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, paracord wristbands, and keychains that make for great gifts or your own personal gear. Look cool or just troll the soy boys with Blue Line Patriot swag. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to stay up to date with my content. But above all, stay safe, stay smart. Blue Line Patriot, out. Thank you.